I think there's three components that have to be a big part of recruiting. And obviously, you're going to look at measurables and talent. And I think those are the obvious. My, my uh, wife has told me that Michael Jordan's a really good player before. So I, I know she can recognize talent. But then there's the – I think there's a love for the game that you can't teach. And that's probably where we start. Because if you love basketball, then you're willing to do a lot of things to get better. And that takes conversations more than it takes what you can see. And I think you just have to do background work to do that. There's also a feel component, like really guys that can really play the game, can see it, know what other four players on the court are supposed to be doing with you, I think is really important. And if you can combine like a love for it and a feel for it, then you can, I think the ceiling's limitless. I really do. And um, I think finding talent is going to be what's beautiful about being at Texas Tech is you can recruit the best talent in the world. Uh, but I think finding people that absolutely love basketball and have a good feel for the game can really change the trajectory of their ability. And we've always developed guys. If you look at our teams historically, we've had guys that people didn't think could necessarily play at a level and they've improved drastically. So I think those two things are the most important that you got to find out other than obvious talent. And um, you've got a reputation uh, as being a very good defensive coach. Obviously, this last North Texas team is an example of that. Uh, clearly, you play a great deal of man-to-man -man defense. But I was wondering if you could go into a little bit of detail on sort of what you do schematically. And uh, um, is it just a straight-up man-to-man that you're running most of the time, or are there certain nuances and things like that to it? Yeah, uh, there are nuances to it. Um, and it's evolved, and I think it continues to evolve. And got to be honest, uh, a big influence on that was was Mark Adams. Played in the league against him as a young coach. Had five years of trying to play against him, and it was you can't run plays. Um, and then when we got to North Texas after our second year, we adopted a lot of the no middle philosophy and have put our own spin on it in ways that we do things different, but also really grateful for his input on uh, and his willingness to share. Just a really gracious guy. And um, we utilize a lot of it. Uh, we don't play much zone. We do have some three-quarter court things that we do. But, you know, it's all personnel, too. I mean, we're going to try to fit what we do to our personnel, and I think that will take some time to figure out. Uh, hi, Coach. You just mentioned a little bit about that personnel. You just mentioned also, too, about what it's going to take for your players and what you're looking for out of them. With your staff, are you planning to talk to uh, guys that are currently on the staff now? What does that process look like for you? Yeah, I, that, that was the biggest thing that I, I told Kirby that we wanted to do. I mean, the moment that our season ended and we had clarity on this is what was next, um, I – that's why we pushed this back, so I could have the opportunity to really go and listen more than I tell and hear their heart. And people can think what they want in regards to this process, uh, but for me, I really wanted to pour our heart into our team that we were coaching at North Texas, and I told them that I hope that they would understand the same. So really what we've done the last three days is try to get to know them, try to get their families, try to get to know those people that are important to them so we can understand what's best for them first and then decide how that fits into what's best for Texas Tech basketball. And you mentioned up on that stage that you came here to win. Why is now a perfect time to win? What did you see out of this job coming to Texas Tech? Why is this the perfect time? Um, you know, I think when you look back at the journey, it's pretty remarkable. I mean, a lot of things pointed to this place that are beautiful that you can't really explain. And there's – there's, um, I would say unexpected is, is an understatement, really. Uh, and the, the love that we have for West Texas, and I mean this sincerely, like my wife and I, when it became an opportunity, I, I, everyone has an opinion on, on Lubbock. I love Lubbock. Like, this is like where my wife and I met, and it's where we want to be with all our heart. And so to say – that um, we knew that this was it would, would be 
a wild journey, but we had a piece about it immediately when we started talking to the search committee. So um, just to answer your question, I, I think that was the first part, that there's a genuine love. And when I talked to them, I felt like that we could continue to build what has already been established, and it's remarkable. I mean, the United Spart Supermarkets Arena on game day is – the, I, do, I do believe it's the best home court in college basketball. And to win championships, you have to win your home games. And at North Texas, we had the best road record in the country. So if you can win all your home games and you have the best road record in the country, you got a good chance to win in some championships. So we just felt like that formula fit our, our, our family, felt, felt like it fit our, our philosophy, and felt like it would fit um, in the big picture. Hey, Coach, I was wondering, do you maybe have a timeline or a deadline, I guess, that you're trying to get the staff filled out? Mm. Good question. Um, part of this journey is figuring out, you know, coming from a staff, and Coach Hodge is going to be introduced as the head coach at University of North Texas. And he and I have been friends for since we were in junior college playing against each other. And he was at Paris. I was 27. He was 24 and a half, 25. And then we worked together for six years. So, um, him being a part of getting the job and then trying to identify and clarify what we're doing. We'll release some names here in the next couple of days. Uh, and then we'll continue to release uh, more staff members as we get closer. Um, but I didn't try to predetermine what we were going to do. We tried to pour our heart into the season that we were in. And, but I do feel really excited about the people that are going to join us. And I know during your time in North Texas, you had a lot of guys who had previously played uh, JUCO. I guess, do you expect that to continue as you try to build out the roster? Maybe just try to, you know, take a bigger glance at the portal. Yeah, well, if you actually looked at last year's team, we signed five, and four of them were portal guys, and one was a high school player. So we didn't sign anybody from junior college last year on that roster. So I just think there'll be a balance. I mean, we recruit people more than we recruit levels. I mean, honestly, we just do our best to – find people that fit. I know that sounds like a random, you know, fully loaded answer, but I do think the portal has become a, a unique part of college basketball that's never been in the history of it. And it's, and it seems like a more viable option even than junior college at this point. Yeah, coach, when you look back at your time at Baylor and to see the success, what did you learn from your time there and all of those great coaching minds that are now head coaches elsewhere? Yeah, well, I, I think first and foremost, you got to start with Coach Drew, and he's got a remarkable love for people. He really does. He, he genuinely cares about people more than he cares about anything else. And he's the guy that if you showed up to practice, he'll go get you a water bottle if you were a guest. And just that's who he is. He's always trying to find ways to make your life better, and he's always trying to find ways – uh, to love other people around him genuinely. And I have so much respect for him for that. And I think that's the part that I probably learned first and foremost, right, is that you, you have to love those people around you first, and then you can have high expectation for them to win. And that's what he's done a remarkable job of, and that's what I think all those guys have taken with them is, you know, it's people first. And you can say it. It's another thing to live it. You kind of mentioned it there during the introductory part, the, all of the familiar faces. I, I'm assuming this was probably a job you were hoping for a couple of years ago. That necessarily didn't happen. What does it mean now to be here and be in this position? And like you said, see all of these people that you grew up with in coaching. Yeah, well, honestly, um, a couple of years ago, I, I didn't. I, I mean, I, just because I know how hard and how long Coach Adams had worked, and I was hoping he would get it, honestly, genuinely. Um, but then in regards to just our, you know, our journey, I think it is amazing the timing that God's timing is. And so I do feel like this is the right time. You know, I really, I really do. So uh, couldn't be more blessed to have this opportunity now. Coach, how far along are you in your assessment on the current players of the, on the roster? Uh, you know, I, I watched as a fan, honestly, all year long. I mean, wh who doesn't watch Monday and Tuesday nights in the Big 12? I mean, there's nothing like that. So, and, our, and just history with everybody in the league, you know, I mean, um, 
so I think there's a there was a genuine interest in watching f- as a fan, and I didn't dive into personnel until our season was over. I genuinely didn't, and um, I felt like giving our team the best chance to win was a priority. And since then, I wanted to get to know them first and talk to them and listen to all our guys here. And then I've watched quite a bit of film in the last 48 hours to try to get a better in-depth, you know, look at each one of them and try to understand, you know, how they may fit and trying to be clear on that with them moving forward. And so really it's just been a get to know them first and get to know their families and try to get an evaluation so that I could give them more clarity after this day. And, you know, once you get to this day, you can, you can start moving. But this day is kind of a big one and, and an exciting one. So I wanted to get past this before I really started, you know, giving them a lot of feedback. But it's been great to get to know them. They obviously have great hearts and looking forward to working with them. Coach, how have you been able to balance the season you guys just had in North Texas and obviously accepting this new job? And how hard was it to leave that jo- old job, obviously? Yeah, well, the blessing was when you, when you leave on a win, which not many teams get to do, <laughs> that's pretty awesome, right? And so those guys we were able to hug and celebrate, and they were – very supportive of the opportunity. Um, and then, you know, just the transition. Uh, been blessed to have the opportunity to work at Arkansas State for one year, and we've had a 21 season in our first season, the first 21 season in the history of the program, regular season. And then uh, to go to North Texas and to be able to win a CBI championship in our first year, just have experience in regards to the pace that it's required, and hopefully I've matured some and learned some some errors that I that I need to improve on. But really confident in our ability to uh, to move this forward quickly in a way that everybody be excited about and legit winning games and playing in meaningful games next season. Uh, Grant, congratulations first of all. Um, you won a lot of games at Millen College, and, and that was the first head coaching job. But how much have you grown as a head coach since then? Oscar, good to see you, man. <laughs> We've been through the back halls of small places. Um, I've grown a lot, right? And I think the biggest part of that is the staff component, right? How do you trust people that you love, and how do you build a, a group that all goes in the same direction? Uh, you know, we we did everything. I made peanut butter and jelly sandwiches as a head coach. So um, that part of it, I, I, I love. And I think that, that willingness to do anything is still a big part of it. But I think utilizing staff is probably the biggest part, right, that you learn and how do you improve. And then from a basketball standpoint, when we've played, and I don't know, a lot of games, you, you learn to manage the game to give your team the best chance to win. And uh, I think there's a lot of areas that we've been able to grow in regards to that. Um, is there anything that you learned during that time that you apply today? I think the biggest thing that I, that, that I learned is that I, you know, there's a competitiveness that's required first and foremost to win. And we have kind of had the philosophy of believe, uh, uh, serve, believe, give, compete. And I, I, I think when you first step into those locker rooms, every time you, they better believe that you're going to win a championship. And you can say it, but it's another thing to walk in there and have that expectation every day. And that's what we do. We, we have the standard that we're going to win a national championship, so how do we approach every day? And that was a credit to those days at Midland. And then and I love hearing uh, Adrian Van Buren, a.k.a. Scooby, Scooby, who played longer for me than anyone. He played six years for us. This is a gray shirt, a red shirt, and then four years at uh, two at Midland and two at Midwestern. And he said the way he put it was, my coach is a Christian, but he's not always nice, I think is the way he put it. So we just had some great practices in those back gyms and competitive practices, and I know that competition is really vital to have a great team. Coach, I know you alluded to the first meeting you had with the team. I guess what were some of the things that you heard from them in terms of listening, and what were some of those overarching themes that you kind of figured out from them? The biggest thing I heard is they want to win. I, mean, I think the expectation of the community and the expectation of the program and, and where, where we have it is there's an expectation to win and that they wanted to get back to, to, to winning and playing in March. 
Um, but they were also very complimentary on moving forward and how we can do it. And I think that was the, the positive part to it is there's a lot of hope in the locker room and, and excitement. I know the last five days have certainly been a whirlwind for you, but I guess over the last couple of weeks, when did you kind of feel like this was a real conversation about you coming back to Lubbock and how uh, special of a situation was it for you to kind of, like you said, have to still go with UNT full hearted and, you know, still try to balance all that? Yeah, great question. Um, you know, the, the great thing about the people that were a part of the committee, they, they genuinely love Texas Tech. And that, that genuine excitement was really more of like a, hey, is this a good fit, right? And, and um, unexpectedly it happening was, I think, a, the beautiful part of it because it was genuine. Um, but, you know, I think the, the key component to it was like, how do we honor the, the men in the locker room at North Texas? And that's where the Kirby was unbelievably gracious to allow us to finish the season before we, you know, made it, made it official. Hey coach, uh, coming back to Lubbock and you talking about what this community brings to the table when it comes to what can be at the USA each and every night out. How do you plan on making sure that the players around you fit and embody the culture that you want to bring to Texas Tech? Well, I think you know this in, in today's culture, the key is finding people that genuinely love what they're doing. And a lot of people do things for different reasons. And if you love basketball and you love winning, you'll find a way to be a part of a place that they know they can do that. If you love scoring more points than you do winning, then this probably isn't the right place for you. And if you love social media more than you love winning, then it's probably not the right place for you. And not to say that those things aren't vital and important. And there's a lot of aspects to college athletics that are important these days. But got to find people that love being a part of winning. And if that's the focus of it, then I think you can do things that people never thought could happen. And we've experienced it every place we've ever been. And I think that's the key, key to it. Uh, you spoke about the fingerprints that are kind of all over the Big 12 now from that staff that you guys had in Baylor. How often do you look to Coach Drew and Coach Tang as beacons for your coaching career? And why do you think that style of coaching and that style of, you know, on and off the court embodies and fits the Big 12 so well? Um, yeah, that's a good question. The, they're, they're unbelievable men. That's what I'll tell you is first and foremost. That's the part that I respect the most about them is they're legit. They're, they're great husbands, they're great fathers, and they are great friends, and they love people well. And I think the way this works now is there has to be a genuine interest in people. You, you can't go out there and have a high expectation to win championships if you don't love them. And that, that's the consistent theme with all those guys. And you can see it on their teams, you can see it on their faces, and I hope people saw it with our team this year, is there's a genuine love, and that's the undercurrent that allows you to build each other up in a way that they're pulling for each other and not pulling for their individual successes over the team. Coach, I'm curious, with your familiarity of, of Lubbock and Texas Tech, was the first time that you saw the Womble after you had taken the job? Yes. Um, I'd heard about it. I'd obviously clicked on the videos. They're awesome. But they don't do it justice. It's unbelievable. And my f the first time I stepped in there was Friday, and it, it really – it just blows my mind. Um, and, I've, and I've been a part of some great facilities. So that part of it really – I think w when you – it doesn't do it justice for what, you s what I saw online. It really doesn't. And I think the – shows that there's a genuine love for our athletes. That's big. How do they go to the – how do they prepare? How do they be at their best? Well, they actually get to be in the best facility that's made for college athletics. And so, yeah, I mean, what a tremendous place and thankful for Dusty and their commitment to making that happen. And Beard, man, he did an awesome job of cultivating it and putting it in a position where it's one of the elite areas and places to play college basketball. And so because of all that, there wasn't any selling to you or your wife. You guys were already sold. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't need to see it to be sold. I mean, we knew in our heart that this was the time and this was the place. And we've always competed for championships. And this is the one that we believe is the time and place to do it. 
And people, I mean, I, I, I talked about a national championship, and I mean that with all my heart because that's going to be, we're going to play with the end in mind. And if you, if you compete for a big national championship, then, you know, you got to win a Big 12 championship to do it. I mean, that's how you prepare yourself for it. So we know the Big 12 is the best conference in the country, and, but you have to have the end in mind, and that's how we're going to approach every day. Awesome. Great to see everybody. Looking forward to it.